All right. So cosine squared theta plus tangent squared theta, cosine squared theta equals 1. Well, what strategy would you use there? Factor. And I would factor that. So cosine squared theta be 1 plus tangent squared theta. So we're trying to prove that the, um, this side equals 1. Now look at that. Was, does 1 plus tangent squared pop out to you? What's that equal to? Secant squared. You remember your Pythagorean identities. You will not have those on your final. you got to know them. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 plus tangent squared equals and 1 plus cotangent squared equals. Very good. Ah, so what's 1 plus tangent squared? Okay, and aren't those reciprocals of each other? So what would that be equal to? One. So you just proved that. That'd be like a, what you call it? Reciprocal identity. Okay, number two, let's prove this one. Sine theta over one minus cosine theta plus sine theta over one plus cosine theta equals two cosecant theta. Of course, this one on the left looks more complicated, so I'm going to go there. You got one just like this on the final. All right, now, what do you think we would have to do with that? Find a common denominator. What would be my common denominator between 1 minus cosine and 1 plus cosine? It would be both of them. Very good. So let's do that. This new denominator is missing 1 plus cosine, so I'm going to multiply the numerator by that. This one's missing 1 minus, so I'm going to multiply the numerator by that. Good Friday morning, Warriors. Hope everyone's off to a wonderful start on this beautiful Friday morning. I'm not going to multiply the denominator right now. I'm going to see if I need to in the end, but I'm going to just go with the top. Once you destroy those, those terms, terms cancel out. Either way, uh, you you will stay in fifth period class. Okay. Now we've also allowed teachers that uh, sign plus sign is two sign. Going to the game to work out uh, things with their colleagues in terms of watching students if they plan to go to the game and they have students. And so all of that is in place. But just remember that students, if you are not going to the game this afternoon, then you will stay in fifth. I really can't do much more with that, so I am going to multiply that to see what's going on. We had a line of students who were still trying to purchase tickets, so teachers, please hold attendance until further notice. It won't be too long. We will send out another email or make another quick announcement, both probably in regards to attendance uh, and posting attendance this morning, but please hold it for the time being. At this time, I'll turn it over to Noah. Please Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, what is one minus cosine squared equal to, guys? Sine squared. Okay. I have a sine and a sine squared. Can I take one off both of those? So I'm left with 2 over sine. Well, I was trying to get 2 cosecant. Isn't 2 over sine equal to that? So that equals 2 cosecant theta. But you do have one like that on your final, okay?
Are there any questions on that one? All right, there's a couple like this on your final. It says find the exact value, sine of 15. Remember, when we could, when I asked you to tell me the exact value of something we didn't learn in unit circle, we had to use those formulas down here, the sine and cosine formulas. I will give those to you, like the sum and difference formulas. So, sine of 15. What two numbers can I add or subtract to give me 15? Okay, 45 minus 30. All right. Sine of 15 equals sine of 45 minus 30. So, Mr. Treasure, I was going to do 60 and 45. You get the same thing, okay? So, I'm going to set it up like that. Now, remember the formula. These formulas are in your notebook. I'm getting it from here. Just following what it says right there. So, it's right there. So, I'm going to write this. Sine of the first one times the cosine of the second one minus the sine of the second one times the cosine of the first one. Okay, and I got that from that formula right there. So sine of 45 is what? Square root of? Cosine of 30, square root of? Sine of 30 is? Mm-hmm. So I get square root of 6 over 4 minus square root of 2 over 4. My answer is square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4. All right, cosine of 165, what two numbers? 180 minus what? I was thinking 120 and 45. Isn't 120 on the unit circle? Yes. So, cosine of 165 equals cosine of 120 plus 45. Okay? Now look at my cosine. Cosine of the first one. Cosine of the second one minus the sine of the first one times the sine of the second one. Run out of space here. So cosine of 120 times cosine of 45 minus sine of 120 sine of 45. Cosine of 120, that's in quad 2, it would be negative 1 half. Cosine of 45, square root of 2 over 2. Sine of 120 would be square root of 3 over 2. Sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. It gives me negative square root of 2 over 4 minus square root of 6 over 4, which can be written as negative square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 4. So you got 2 like that. Y'all good on that? Is that coming back to you? Now, you also have two that relates to that, but it's easy. Remember when you had to work backwards? Like, they did the hard work for you. So this is tangent. We know it's tangent. They're adding there. So think it back to your formulas. I know you probably won't know that top of your, right off the top of your head. Would you add or subtract 80 and 10? Add, because this is the addition format for tangent, okay? So what's 80 plus um, 10? What's tangent of 90? Undefined. Because it's 0, 1, 1 divided by 0. You see that? Here, number 4. Is it What type of formula is this? Sine, cosine, or tangent? It starts with cosine, so what is it? Cosine. I look at my formula, I think, okay, which one had the minus? Was it the addition formula or subtraction formula? Addition. Remember, cosine is different. So what will I do with 10 and 50? Add them. What's cosine of 60? One half would be my answer there. You remember working backwards on those? So you need to look at your notes on those, okay? There's gonna be that's gonna be our review for the day for our final, okay? Alright. Now I want to review the formal definition of a derivative. We get out of eight fifty three, that's why Mr. Esther going over this kind of quickly. 
All right, review the formal definition of that before we review what we did yesterday. So I have this derivative, I mean the function, not a derivative at the moment. What is my formal definition of a derivative? Limit is what? H approaches 0 of minus F of Okay. If I take X plus H and I plug it in, I just simply get that right there. You all agree? That's a plus. Okay, minus. If I take X and plug it in, I get this right here. All over H. I take 0 and plug it in, I get 0 in the denominator. i got to rationalize the denominator. Now let's look at this. When I FOIL this, this times this, well, what ha would happen to the um, square root? So I'm left with x plus h plus 2. Now, I'm about to multiply these two, and it's going to get something ferocious, won't it? But remember, what happens to this term and when I multiply this term? They do what? So do you really have to write that? No, you don't have to. So I'm going to skip that step up. Now, but a negative times a positive, what's going to happen? A negative, and what's going to happen to those square roots? They're going to do what? Cancel both. It's very important because it's negative. What's that negative going to do to everything right there? Changes the signs, okay? You have one just like this on your test, Jesus. That's why I'm doing this right now. Okay? All over. Now, at this point, everything that doesn't have a what should cancel out. This, this minus makes everything in here what? So will everything cancel out here? Yeah. I'm left with h over h square root of x plus h plus 2 plus x plus 2. Oh, I forgot to put an h right there. Now still I need to do what next? Factor out of what? These cancel out. When I plug 0 in now, I'll just get 1 over square root of x plus 2 plus square root of x plus 2. Can I add those since they have the same thing under? Yep. So it's going to be 1 over 2 square root of x plus 2 would be my derivative. If I wanted to find my I rock at like x equals 3, I would just take 3 and plug in my derivative. Do you all get that? All right. Um, now let's get our homework out. All right. Number one, what's y prime equal to, class? Zero. Very good. Number two, what is g prime of x equal to? Two x. Very good. Number three, y prime is equal to? One. Very good. Number four, s prime is equal to? Very good. Three t squared minus two. Number five, f prime of x equals? Very good. 2x minus 3 halves x squared. Number 6, h of prime of x would equal to what? Negative 4x plus 3. Very good. Number 7, g prime of x would equal? Negative 4 over 1 half minus 9 halves x to the 1 half power. Plus 1 over 2. All right, let me do that one. Yes, that's right. You're getting right here. All right, g prime of x equals... That will be negative 1x to the raised to negative 2 minus 9 halves x raised to the 1 half plus 20 over 7x um, to the negative 3 7 So then you write it g prime of x equals negative 1 over x squared 
minus 9 half x to the 1 half plus 20 over 7 to the x to the 3 sevenths. Oh. He said, Mr. Chase, what if I just put the half up there with a 9? It's fine. X to the 1 half. So it will be negative 9x to the 1 half over 2. That's fine. But mainly putting that in the denominator, putting that x down there in the denominator to get rid of that negative exponent. Number 8 would be f prime of x equals 2x minus um, 1 fourth x to the negative 1 half. And then you would have to be negative 1 over 4x to the 1 half. Do you all see that? Number nine would be y prime equals two-thirds x to the one-third, to the negative one-third. So then it would be y prime equals, I have to write, I can't think and say it at the same time. So it would be y prime equals two-thirds x to the negative one-third. Then I would write y prime equals two over three x to the one-third. So Mr. Church, I know it's a radical. Are you wanting me to rationalize the denominator? No, I'm not asking you to do all that. Number 10, f prime of x equals, let's work this out here. Did y'all get that for number 10? Number 11, f prime of x equals negative 9, x to the negative 4. Negative 9 over x to the 4. Yes, ma'am. Y'all supposed to do that being zero here, guys, okay? Oh, you got to write your name on it. I don't know your name. Let's see that. Write your name right here. Now, i got some information to give to y'all, but y'all come during zero period to get that, okay? Thank you. Okay, I said negative 3 minus 1. Yeah, subtracting that 1. All right. On number 12, what do you think we need to do before we do the derivative? Simplify that. So when you're dividing, what will you do with 3 and 2? Subtract, so it will be y to the x, which is just y prime would be what? 1. All right, number 13. Okay, you're dividing like bases. You subtract exponents. 3 minus 2 is 1. And remember, when you just have a single variable, the derivative is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 would be x to 0, so it's just 1. All right, number 13. f prime of x, bring that exponent down, take 1 off, it would be 3x squared. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Negative 4 times negative 2 is a positive 8. x to the negative 5th, so I'm going to rewrite that as f prime of x. 3x squared minus 3 plus 8 over x to the fifth. That would be your derivative. Number 14, g prime of x equals 2x minus 2 would be your answer. On number 15, what do you think we need to do before we do the derivative? Distribute, yes. F of x equals 6. What do you do with those exponents? Add. F prime of x equals 24x cubed plus 45x squared. Here, y prime would be bring the 9 fourths down. Minus 1, that would be x to the 5 fourths. I left my y equals off here, so it would be y prime equals 8x plus 3. 2 times 4 is 8. Take one off that. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 minus 1 is 0. You don't have to worry about the x. All right, number 18. What's y prime going to be? 20x to the minus 28x what? 
third minus x what? Squared. Okay, number 19. F prime equals 48x to the Very good. We're not worried about 20. I should have told you not to stress about number 20. We're not ready for 20 quite yet. I ain't worked it out yet, but I, we will do that before Monday. All right. If I had time, I'll work out right now, but we've got to finish our notes before the bell rings. All right. Let's turn to page 24. We're going to do this section. At the bottom, you see where it says assignment? That's what your homework's going to be at the bottom of the page, okay? But we're just going to do this top page, and you need to pay attention. Don't be doing your homework right now because these problems are different. All right. When you got variables in the denominator or variables under roots, you got to rewrite them, guys, so you can be able to take the derivatives, okay? And you remember in math workshop when we practiced how to write the roots like x to the four-thirds and all that. Like I gave you the picture and you had to write it using a fraction. That's why we did that, so we get ready for this. How do you think I could rewrite this so I can easily take the derivative? Two-thirds what? X, x to the negative, negative two. That allows me to bring that negative two down, okay? So let's rewrite that, okay? So I'm going to rewrite this as y equals two-thirds x to the negative two. Now, if it had been negative 2 in the denominator, it would have came up as a positive 2, okay? You're moving it up. Now, can I bring that negative 2 down now? What's negative 2 times 2 thirds? Negative 4 thirds, x. Take one off that, that would be negative 3, wouldn't it? Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Do you all see I got that? Now, I'm going to rewrite it as my final answer. That would be negative 4. Thirds, where would that x to negative 3 go? Yep, that's my answer. Because you don't want to submit it with a negative exponent. So my derivative would be y prime equals negative 4 over 3x cubed. Number 20. How can I rewrite that one? Very good. 2, bring that x up, put it as a negative 1. Now, what's negative 1 times 2? Negative 1 minus 1 is? Okay, now how can I write it? Final answer. Negative 2 over what? x squared is, would be my derivative. So if I wanted to find the IROP, the instantaneous rate of change at any point, that's what I would plug it into. Let's stop for a minute. How do y'all feel on 19 and 20? Y'all good or your hands sick? But you see why we did what we did in math workshop third number. Let's get ready for this. Now, how can I rewrite x here to have an x on x to the what? One half. One half. Very good. One half times two is what? One. One half minus one will be a negative one half, wouldn't it? So my final answer would be y prime equals 1 over x to the 1 half. How could I write that, though? Yeah, that looks better. You can do that. So that would be my derivative right there. You said, Mr. I'm going to rationalize. No, I'm not making you rationalize on any of that. But that would be your derivative, okay? When we, would you take off the root of x? No, 1 half. I just might frown a little bit, but no, it would be me to take off. Because that looks prettier than that, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. Let's look at 22. Y equals, I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over 2, x2. Now, how would I write that? Negative 3 halves or negative 2 thirds? Negative 2 thirds. Because remember, the root goes under just like it lives underground. Negative 2 thirds. Now I'm going to say negative two-thirds times one-half. That would be negative two over six, which would be negative one-third, because I've said this times this. Minus one would be a negative five-thirds. So how I got negative one-third was I said negative two-thirds times one-half gives me negative two-sixths. You can reduce that down to negative one-third. 
then negative two-thirds minus one will give me negative five-thirds. So that, now I'm going to clean it up. Y prime equals negative one over three, the cube root of x to the fifth. Mr. Hector? Yes, ma'am? Will you please send Diddy Dunaway to see Miss Miles at the end of class? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Just remember, Miss Miles, she's the senior counselor in the um, st student services. Okay, do you see how I rewrote that? It was x to negative 5 thirds. Leave my negative 1 in the numerator. 3 goes here. Your root here is here, and then your x on x to the fifth. That's your derivative. All right, number 23. There's nothing really. We've handled things like this one before. That's just right. It's negative 3 halves x. 1 times negative 3 halves is negative 3. 1 minus 1 is what? 0. Do I have to worry about that? So y prime is just negative 3 halves. I don't know why that one was included. I reckon just to show you the different types. Now number 24, do you think you need to cube everything in that denominator before you do anything? Yes, you do. So I'm going to rewrite that as 5 over 8x cubed. Now I'm going to rewrite that as 5, y equals 5 eighths, x to the negative 3. So now, negative 3 times 5 eighths would be negative 15 over 8, minus 1, that's going to give me a negative 4. So I said negative 3 times that to get this, negative 3 minus 1, that's your derivative rule, negative 4. Clean it up, y prime equals negative 15 over 8x to the fourth would be my derivative. And then the last one, and then you got 10 minutes to do your homework. Yes. Yes. Which one? I can. Go ahead. Yes. Because you got to bring it up so in order you bring that power down. Like if you have an x in the denominator or x under a radical, you got to rewrite it, okay? All right, so here I would re go ahead, James. You had a question. What is it? No, I was correct. Okay. All right, so here I got seven thirds. I bring this x up. It's a negative two, so this will be what? Positive two times seven thirds is fourteen over three. Two minus one is x, so y prime would just be. 14 thirds x. How y'all feel on that? That's e that is for real your last ever lesson in here. For freak out. Your last lesson as a high school mason. Mm-hmm. Yours too, Jackson. How about yours, Derek? Mm-hmm. All right. So now you have 10 minutes to do 1 through 16. You can get that done and have no homework this weekend. Oh, what is the direct? No, we're not going anywhere. Have a seat. You're going to do your homework. Oh, okay. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. What's the derivative of cosine? If you have a number in front of those, you just leave the number and do the derivative trigger. We got you? Okay.